Well, look what came in the mail today. So I gotta give a ridiculously huge shout out to the folks over at Toro for providing these really awesome 60 volt lithium cordless uh, yard tools for review and evaluation on my channel at absolutely no cost. This is super cool, and I got to continue the shout out for them sending me that really awesome uh, Toro Z Master 2000 HDX zero turn mower, which has been absolutely fantastic. But yeah, all this stuff came in the mail today. This is their 60 volt blower, 60 volt hedge trimmer, 60 volt pole saw, chainsaw, cordless string trimmer, and a cordless stick edger. This is just absolutely amazing. Again, big shout out to the folks over there. I'm looking forward to putting this stuff to the test. Now keep in mind, this is not a sponsored video. This is an evaluation, a review video. So if you don't know the difference, a sponsored video is where they pay you to say good stuff about their products. And a lot of companies do that, right? You see companies all the time and YouTubers advertise for folks who sponsor videos. But the folks at Toro provided all this stuff for review and evaluation on my channel at absolutely no cost. That's a, that's a ton of support and I really appreciate it. Guys, hang tight, I'll be right back all right so in front of you you are seeing all these tools unboxed these are all part of toro's new 60 volt max lineup these all use brushless motors as well very very cool we have the string trimmer or the weed eater we have the pole saw and that's to keep all these trees nice and trimmed we have the hedge cutters. Now, I'm gonna have to figure out an interesting way to showcase these because I don't think I have any hedges around here, but we certainly have some things that you could use a hedge trimmer on. We have their blower, as well as the edge trimmer. So this is very, very cool, and that's an edger. And then we have two of their 60 volt flex force batteries. These are both two amp hour batteries. So I'm really interested in seeing how long they last whenever we're utilizing them with these tools. Um, I'm pretty sure you can probably get larger size batteries if you need them. But what's interesting about these is the charger actually just slides into this top groove. It's a real small charger versus typically what you see with this big cradle that you have to slide the battery into. So very, very interesting. But yeah, this is our new lineup from Toro. Again, big shout out to the folks over at Toro for supporting the channel and providing these to us for review and evaluation at no charge, along with that awesome Z Master zero turn mower that we have, the 2000 HDX. But all of these have some characteristics that are kind of interesting. So, you know, regardless of what type of power tool you buy these days, there's gonna be plastic housings on just about everything. Whether it's a super, super, super high-end weed eater or a pole saw, everything has plastic, which I have no problem with. What I do care about is, is the quality and, and how the unit actually feels. And all of these have a good feel to them. They're not lightweight. They all feel, you know, like they're professional tools. Now, I do not know if Toro considers this equipment to be commercial grade. Um, you know, the challenge is, is you're seeing a lot of battery powered equipment start to cross that line from consumer to prosumer to commercial. And, you know, my gut tells me this is all probably consumer, prosumer grade stuff. Um, I don't necessarily think or know if it's commercial grade. However, we have enough property out here and enough obstacles to really check all of this stuff to see how well it holds up. Maybe the hedge trimmer might be the only one I gotta I have to get a little creative with. But I'm super excited to use this stuff. It all is really nice. I love the fact that this is a straight trimmer. Um, whenever you look at the little deflector right there, the shield, um, it doesn't remind me of a commercial style shield, but at the same time though, I don't have a heck of a lot of experience with all the different types of weed eaters that are out there. Um, I do like how you load the string and how it uh, simply passes through and then you wind it up, which is really nice. That is very commercial grade and sense. Um, all of this stuff can attach to the side of the mower um, which is really nice using some of the clips, aside from probably the hedge trimmer, the blower, and the chainsaw, but pretty much any of these shafted devices can. I like the tree trimmer as well. This is pretty cool, the pole saw. Um, it connects and goes together a little differently than some of the other pole saws I've used, like the DeWalt. Uh, basically, this one comes all folded up, and you can tell by these boxes, none of them are huge boxes, which means they're all designed so you can pick them up, throw them in your vehicle, and take them home. Typically, if you look at some of the commercial stuff, you'll see 
see that it's just a straight solid shaft. But the good thing about battery equipment is that the motor is typically always at the bottom. So they don't have to run a motor at the top here. And all you're essentially running through the center is a cable to power the motor. So, you know, that's the big difference oftentimes in what you're going to see between something that is battery powered versus something that's gas powered. Gas powered almost always is powered from the back and then there's some type of a shaft that runs to the front to be able to power the tool. Um, I believe most pole saws that are gas powered probably have the motor at the end. But the nice thing about battery powered equipment, again, is they can put the motor closer to where the force needs to be applied. So it's more efficient use of power, if that makes sense. You don't have loss of power across the actual shaft. And because of that, you can also package it much smaller again because you don't have to worry about a shaft that's running down the center of any of these tubes and you can collapse them. So they take up far less room when you're not using them. Uh, they all tighten with these Allen keys right here and they come in two sections. So you have this little snap that goes into place. This part slides into that part and then you simply tighten that little Allen head right there and that's all you need to do. If you don't tighten that, it's going to feel a little bit wobbly right here. But once you tighten that, it feels just like it would if it was just one solid shaft. So that's very cool. Anyways, we're gonna throw some batteries in these devices. We've already put bar oil in both the chainsaw as well as the pole saw. And I probably need to add some to this as well. Let me see if I can find a spot. This one might not take bar oil, but I'm gonna check it out of course, and we're not gonna use it if it does need bar oil, at least without putting bar oil in it. But yeah, we're gonna put some of these to the test and see how they work. Okay, so I got my father out here. He's going to operate the pole saw first, and we have this little tree right here, right when you come around this area, and we have a dead limb or a cracked limb that's hanging off of it. So the first big challenge is whether or not we can cut off this limb right here, because this thing is really protruding out, and I'd hate for that to poke someone in the leg when they walk by. Let's see what we got going on here. We're wearing safety goggles as well, because safety's first. How'd that feel? Pretty easy? Yeah, it's real easy. Oh, okay, he's cutting off the little branch over there. All right, next we're gonna cut off this limb right here, probably right down there near the base. Sound like it's struggling at all? No, it feels fine. It's all easy. right, let's find something bigger. Okay, moving on to bigger and better things. Since we have a lot of tools, we're not going to spend too much time with each individual one, but we're going to put them definitely through the test. So the next one is this limb coming off right here, starting right here, going up there. First cut we're going to make is right here. What do you figure that is? About a eight inch diameter? Yeah, maybe, maybe six? Six. Six. A little bit more than six, maybe seven. Maybe seven. Yep. Well, we're going to cut it off right here, right there, and then we'll move to the bigger one. There we go. It's a lot heavier than it looks. All right, so next, let's see if we can cut it off there. Let's start it deep though. Let's get, the, get it so the rest is right up against the trunk. We got more mesquite. All right, so we'll leave these for the chainsaw. But how did that feel? How did it cut through? It's fine. It doesn't, uh, it pulls a little bit like you would expect it to, but it feels like it's taking a good bite and the motor doesn't seem to be struggling much at all. This does pretty good for battery. Okay. Okay, so next we got a crazy tree here. This one swoops down real low and I actually park some trailers back here sometimes. So what we're gonna take off of this one is, I guess we'll take this, crazy limb going off that way right here. So let's start with it right here and then we'll cut this limb off right there. Well, that was pretty effortless. And then we'll cut it off right there. You don't want to take it right here? Yeah, you can take it right there.
I think it's off. It's just leaning against the tree. All right, and then I want to remove all this stuff that's shooting down this way without removing too much, though. So, well, it seems as if the only way to do that would be to remove the whole thing, but yeah, that sounds good. All right, and then maybe this out shoot coming off the bottom right here, the small limb off the bottom right there, if you can reach it. Nope, uh, a little bit further back, right there. Um, we're gonna have to tighten the, the chain a little bit, but it's really easy. You just use a slotted bit or screwdriver right here, and then you tighten it, and then the chain will get tight again, and then you, you wanna loosen this first before you do it, but no, it's cutting pretty good. I'd say it cuts uh, equally as well as some of the other ones I've used. I'm not going to say it's like crazy, crazy better, but it's certainly effortless, works really well, and you could easily cut up a lot of trees with this tool. So that's very good. Let's move to the next tool. Okay, so there is a little battery monitor right here. And it just drops from four to three. So yeah, that's after the cuts we've done. Um, not really a issue with the actual tool. It's more the fact that these are just two amp hour batteries. So they don't have a tremendous amount of uh, capacity to them. But yeah, we're dropped to three bars. We're going to go ahead and throw this in the chainsaw and cut up some of that, uh, that wood that we chopped down. Okay, so we are at this tree stump. You know, it looked dead when we uh, cut it down with the other saw, but now it's still alive. But we're going to go ahead and cut this thing as close to the ground as we can get it. Um, we're going to go to some bigger stuff after this, so let's just go ahead and take this whole thing off. Um, we're probably looking at about a 13-inch diameter trunk to this thing. So let's go ahead and take this thing out. Like I always like to say, there's always a lot of ants in trees, but you never really see any uncles. Moving on. Okay, so we're back here at the mesquite tree. Again, that's probably seven inch diameter right there. And then it tapers down a bit. This one right here is probably eight to 10 inches in diameter. It actually maintains that. Let's cut this one into three pieces and let's cut that one into four pieces. Try to make them all about maybe 20 inch sections. Okay, so we got this one all cut up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. And we're gonna move on to a really chunky log and run this through. Now, I know a lot of people saw the video I did where I bought the Wen, uh, and I forgot what voltage it is. And it's a really nice electric chainsaw, battery powered. But what I wanna see here is specifically, you know, how this one stacks up with the bigger stuff. It's performing a little bit more effortlessly. That makes sense, just a little bit. I'm not gonna say it's profound, but it certainly feels as if it's going through it and it doesn't sound as if it's changing in tone or as pitch as much as the uh, the wind does. But let's move on to something bigger. Okay, Dad, where are we at on battery power right now? Yeah, we're about 50% right now. Okay, so about halfway. All right, so we're starting at halfway 
Um, where should we start on this thing? This is a big old log. Um, right here, I'm gonna say that's close to 18 inches, you think? So it's gonna be at the maximum depth. This looks like a 16 inch, 16 blade. inch blade. So we may not even be able to make it all the way through that. So maybe we'll start right here where it creases because that's gonna be pretty thick. That's about 16 inches. All right, whenever you're ready. So the question is, could you cut a 16 inch log that's completely filled with fire ants with this battery powered chainsaw? The answer is yes. It cuts through it. It's a slow going process. It's not super, super fast, but it certainly is effective. All right. I apologize to all the fire ants that lost their lives in the making of this section of the video. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and split this video up into two segments just to keep this video from being way too long. Um, and today we've basically featured the pole saw and the chainsaw, so both of the chain cutting tools. In the next video we're going to feature all the rest of them and give you kind of a rundown of what they're all capable of and how they work. But so far we've been pretty impressed with what we've seen today. and. You know, honestly, I don't think we're going to be any less impressed with the rest of the tools whenever we demonstrate those. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. Now's a great time to subscribe if you want to see how the rest of the tools do out here on the property with some of the crazy stuff we're going to have to use it with. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.